Everything in this universe runs according to the decree of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah says, Inna kulla shay'in khalaqunahu bi qadr. Indeed, everything we have created with a decree, including plagues and epidemics. Therefore, plagues will not harm anyone unless Allah Azza wa Jal had predestined that to harm him or infect him. Even if that plague was classified or becomes a pandemic, it doesn't matter. As long as Allah Azza wa Jal did not predestine for that to happen, it will not. Allah Azza wa Jal says, قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا Say, nothing will afflict us except that which Allah Azza wa Jal has predestined for us. So, we need to think positive, think good of Allah Azza wa Jal, expect well-being from Allah Azza wa Jal, be optimistic and expect goodness from Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the other hand, there are people under the pretext of relying on Allah and thinking good of Allah, they become negligent. To avoid becoming paranoid, they neglect utilizing means and taking precautionary and preventive measures. Well, Islam, as Islam through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam legislated for us a set of measures as preventive measures in all times and particularly during times like this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded, and this is in, the, in Bukhari, commanded us, he said, cover your food and drink containers. And in the narration of Muslim, he explained why. He said, lest plague falls in it. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam legislated, instructed and did. He said whenever someone sneezes, he needs to cover his face. He would sallallahu alayhi wa sallam either cover his face with his hands or with his so his thobe, his garment or his headgear. Whatever is available at the time. And he would lower his voice. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instructed us and did. Alayhi salatu wa sallam. Frequent washing of the hands. The Prophet ﷺ used to wash his hands whenever he wanted to drink or eat. And whenever he woke up from sleep and before he went to bed, he legislated performing wudu. He ﷺ told us when he was asked about whether or not kissing and hugging while greeting someone is a form of greeting, he said no. So we need to refrain from kissing and hugging. During times like this in particular and in general because it contradicts the sunnah. When someone feels that he has some of the symptoms, then he needs to hasten to get his, himself examined, isolate himself from, from the community and hasten to get treatment. Because the Prophet wasallam, who said, يُعْجِبُنِ الْفَعْلِ As in the Bukhari, I like optimism and he instructed us to rely on Allah he said tadawaw seek treatment as in the book of Ahmed classified as authentic by Albani brothers sisters we mentioned this last time and I repeat it this time due to its, its importance supplication is a very powerful tool that we need to utilize and I will repeat that very important Dua from the Prophet وسلم, because it's very beneficial in general and especially during the times of plague and ep uh, epidemics. He وسلم, used to supplicate saying, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-barasi wal-jununi wal-judhami wa min sayyi al-asqam. O Allah, I seek refuge in you from leprosy, madness, albinism and from any evil disease. Let us utilize these legislated Islamic preventive measures and take a moderate course, not being paranoid and not being negligent. Ibn Kathir mentioned in his famous history book that in the Hijri year 478, fever and plague became widespread. It outbroke. And it covered massive areas, the entire area of Iraq, greater Syria, Hijaz, the entire area. He said, it spread to the extent 
that wild animals died in the wilds and cattle died in the, in the villages and in the towns. So much so that people could hardly find meat to eat and, and, and milk to drink. And then a dark, strong, powerful wind storm blew and it uprooted the trees to the extent, it terrified people to the extent that they thought it was Yawmul Qiyamah. It was the hour. And then the Abbasid Caliph at the time, Al-Muqtadi bi Amrillah, decided to make a very important move and take a very positive step. He commanded the scholars to revive in joining good and forbidding evil. He instructed that all musical ins instruments to be broken, all alcoholic containers to be broken, and all corrupt people and evil be people to be expelled from the area. Ibn Kathir says, and as soon as this was applied, the hardship was lifted. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we need to return to Allah. The worst time to commit a sin, to be far from Allah is a time like this. When Muslims and people at large, the globe is being tested. The globe is being afflicted. Allah says, ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر. Corruption calamities have appeared on the land and the sea. Why? بما كسبت أيدي الناس. As a result of what people earned with their hands, meaning their deeds. What's the wisdom? لِيُذِيقَهُمْ بَعْضَ الَّذِي عَمِلُوا So that he would make them taste the evil consequence of some of what they did. What's the objective? لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ Perhaps that they would return to the right path. Let us return to the right path. Let us take a pledge right now with Allah that we will stop. We will go get back. We will reconcile with Him. We would refrain from prohibitions. We would control ourselves. Make ourselves adhere to His path. Allahumma <laughs> inna